Okay, so let's talk about Chris a little bit here. So Chris, you know, you've seen his Instagram, you know he's an amazing photographer, but he's also an accomplished explorer. He is a creative director, speaker, author, and a filmmaker. And as I mentioned to you, I first met him 10 years ago when we did an interview on my show, Advancing Your Photography. Welcome, my friend. And thanks yeah. for coming back after all these years. Thanks for having me. I'm stoked to be here. So, Chris, what are the key points that you use every time you pick up a camera or even before you pick up a camera? You know, those core points of photography that you rely on. It depends on so many factors. I mean, there's no way to say that there's a there's a perfect formula for what I might look for on every shoot. I think it depends on if I'm shooting a portrait assignment or it depends on if I'm shooting um, an environmental assignment. I think that the key component for me is that typically, most of the time, the best work comes with having a vision for it first. Um, and, and, and I think a big part of that is, is you know, speaking to that concept of, of what you see in your mind's eye and then, and then creating that, right? And, and creating as many opportunities. To me, there's no such thing as, as luck in photography. There's no such thing as just dumb luck. Every, you know, there's always a level of preparation. I mean, if you walk outside and you brought a camera with you, you're, you're in some way prepared. Right. If you put a battery in that camera, you're even more prepared. So for me, the first component is preparedness. Like if you want to capture a great image, imagine if it's sunrise and you're in New Zealand and it's beautiful. And the night before you were shooting time lapses or long exposures and you have an ISO 4000 on your camera. So what I'm, <laughs> is, what I'm saying here is in the evening before you need to be prepared for what that morning is going to look like. Taking that moment, that time to prep yourself and your equipment so that you can literally push the trigger button and maybe the camera set up at ISO, you know, 100 at F11 at 250th of a second. So it's just ready for the morning. Preparedness is one of the big things. I would say the second thing is um, be willing to, to evolve, be willing to not be so sticking to your guns, you know, that you're, and, and your creative vision that if something else happens, if something new occurs, you can't shift and or kind of evolve that focus of what you're doing. Right. To me, that's really important um, because there's a lot of moments where I've been I've been so just, you know, the idea is so baked in my mind that that I'm not accepting of, of anything new. So I think being able to evolve and being able to shift and that comes with a bit of time and energy to uh, to realize maybe that your creative process, my creative process, isn't always the perfect one. Like being being open to to new things that might come in, and that's that's really how I think great images are created. Like um, if you go to the beach and you have a vision for the, how the shot's going to be, but really the shot is 200 feet down the beach or on a cliff. Be able to move, be willing to move, and be willing to sacrifice something to do so. And I would say the third thing. Um, is always asking yourself, what's the story, right? What's the story? Right on. And, but from the moment you leave the car or the moment you leave your house or the moment you get on the plane, what's the story? What's the story I'm trying to tell here? And I'm not saying that every photograph needs to be this deep, complicated story, but in many ways, it's important to recognize that you have the ability to say something more meaningful than what the image can say, which really is the story behind the photograph. And I just, I hope that people can start to consider that. You probably have already answered this, but in terms of, of getting an image that is really going to grab people emotionally, any particular advice for that? The light plays such a huge role. I, I lend towards wanting to shoot more silhouettes. The reason I love shooting silhouettes is because there's a sense of anonymity in the image that allows the viewer to then put themselves into that position, right? So there's a relatability to shooting a photograph that is in some way shot during those first 20 minutes of sunlight or that those last 20 minutes of sunlight. And that's the, the golden hour, right? But yeah. even more important than the golden hour is the fact that when you're shooting a subject, where you can't really see the face, you can't really see the logos, you can't really see the clothing. All of that becomes unimportant and all you're focused on as the viewer is 
is the action. What's happening? What am I seeing in this image? Can I relate to it? Do I relate to the movement, the motion, the light? And so I think that for me, I, I aim to shoot images that the viewer can really insert themselves into. And I, and I guess to really boil it down, if you were to take the, the idea of shooting a silhouette and then shooting a relatable image, you're kind of putting it into this one terminology where you want to shoot a photograph that's timeless. And that's really what it's all about. And I, and I mean that in the truest sense that you can't date the image. If the, if the image feels like 1967 or 2020, great. It should feel like it could happen anywhere, anytime. I think that's really nature in its purest form. And I really, uh, I really aim to shoot photographs that, that strike that fine balance. And, and that to me is how you create an emotional image. But the next thing I want to do here, tell me about this image. I am intrigued and I have some questions for you, but I'd love to hear the story, first of all. This is actually one of my favorite photographs to talk about because of the fact that, first of all, there's this you know beautiful kind of feminine form walking on a longboard. It's late at night. You know, there's the sun is just about to drop. This is summertime. And the cool part about this image to me is that I'm standing in about one foot of water. I mean, I'm literally like just standing up really? like this. Yeah. I mean, honestly, any person out there who has the use of all four limbs could shoot this photograph really easily. This, this required no skill, no special talent. I mean, it, it's, that's kind of what I love about it is that the, the, a lot of times we have this vision that we need to have these, you know, like, really good swimmer or we're, we're a really talented water photographer to create an image like this. And the truth is, no, I think like understanding that with a little bit of vision and a little bit of understanding of what you want the shot to look like, you can create something beautiful. And this photograph has definitely been one of my most, I guess I'd say prolific. Um, the reason being a lot of things. First of all, let's just break it down. The, the girl is surfing left to right. We read left to right. It's always going to be easier for someone to translate an image when the action is happening in that way. I'm also leaving space where they're going. This is these are big topics and I'm I'm really just touching on yeah. them with a paint. But you're always wanting to leave space to where they're to me it's more important to show where somebody's going than where somebody's been. Why? Because if I was panning over more left, I'd be showing the trail of whitewater. Nobody cares about that. They want to see the clean open wave yeah. and they want to see the landscape falling away. So there's the girl, there's the sun, there's the landscape, there's the wave, there's all these layers. It's not so much about rule of thirds as it is adding as much depth as possible. Now consider this, if this photograph was shot midday, what would be different? You would see her hair, you would see her skin color, you'd see her wetsuit, her logos, you would see everything, her board, but you don't see that. And because you don't see that, you are able to get lost and have a little escape with just the image itself. And the beauty of this image to me, specifically a photograph where it's not this big, massive, gnarly wave and dudes are getting barreled and there's all this bravado is that there's this gentle, and again, I'm gonna use the word feminine approach to how she's surfing. And it relates to a lot of people because most folks who've ever surfed, they can't relate to standing up on a huge wave, but they could relate to being in the ocean when the sun's setting on a one foot wave, totally. you know, th this speaks to all of those people. So to me, that's what makes it so powerful. And I think that in many ways, it's one of my favorite photographs because of that fact, because of the fact that I know it can speak to just a huge audience of folks who are, who are wanting to kind of have that escape. Do you have any like top tips for processing in Lightroom that you kind of lean towards? For Lightroom, for me, it's a it's the the only way to really describe it is that I really I at all costs avoid touching contrast bar, saturation bar because my my goal is always to select the areas that I want to work with and only adjust the um, tone curve. Either I want to push it towards a cool place or push it towards a warm place, meaning that all I'm going to really adjust is the temperature. So, for example, highlighting or selecting a certain area or, or going into a certain area and just adjusting it warm to cool. Because if you try to slide that saturation bar or slide that contrast bar, you're asking the computer to tell you 
where this image needs color and it just is going to add it right yeah there's no tension there and i think that in many ways working having worked in the dark room for years um it's the same thing as when you would you know dodge and burn or you'd put a red filter over something to make it more black that's kind of the process all we have in an image is we have different temperatures of cool and warm and that really plays into an even bigger color theory which i've really been tried to implement into my images which is that cool and warm tones they push and they pull right when you study three-dimensional color you you understand that that's what makes a sunset so significant is the fact that we have these two highly contrasting colors that really work in opposition to create depth and depth is the only thing i want to create i don't care about color i don't care about saturation um, all i care about is depth and if that requires contrast um, I use it through the tone curve. So this is from Ethan. What are the most important elements to plan when going on a photography focused road trip, such as your California coast trip? I think besides obviously really good snacks and a good playlist yeah, uh, and some sort of a comfortable vehicle. Um, when I set out on, I mean, I've done a lot of road trips again. And I think that the, uh, the purpose of the trip in and of itself is maybe the most important thing to focus on in the beginning because when I did the California surf project road trip which was from Canada to Mexico I had an intention I wanted to create a book and that book that I wanted to create was was really focused around the idea of surfing in every coastal county so if you have some structure or sort of a goal in mind that's the first thing that really helps if you don't that's totally fine but I think that having structure or a goal really can can kind of bring the focus in a little bit. Now, one thing I'd say is that if you are intending to walk away from that trip, wherever you're going with like a series of images, think about if you were to put this in a book and you were to tell the complete story, what would that look like? Would there be portraits? Would there be landscapes? Would there be, you know, images of, of more than just, you know, portraits of, of who's shooting it, of who's working on it? And again, where are the words coming in? Where is the story? Is this journal entries? Are you working with a writer to tell this story? I know that I'm getting like way ahead here and I'm thinking way advanced, but really there's nothing worse than coming back from a great road trip or a great trip in general and feeling like, oh my gosh, we're like 80% there with telling a great story or having a great article, but we never considered these things. It can be as simple as like taking a photograph of like the little mom and pop general store where you had the best berry cobbler of your life, right? Depending on the story you want to tell, those little tiny details can really add up to make a great article for Outside Magazine or something like that, right? It's not always about the peak action, the high, big moments. I think that being able to kind of look at the micro and sort of the macro is really important. So to me, when I, when I work on a road trip, if I'm not just going from point A to point B, but I'm actually stopping along the way and I'm taking my time, I really want to digest each place I'm going. I want to look at the destinations. I want to hone in on my hero locations, but also all those places along the way that I might stop. Those are equally as important. So giving, giving, uh, giving time and space. And, and I think that the importance of a good road trip that people kind of forget is that it takes a long time. Like I spent 50 days on the California coast, two to three days per county, right? If you're just going to drive somewhere overnight, you're probably not going to get the images you need. Okay, Chris. So we're going to wrap up, but is there any final advice you'd like to leave our folks with out there just to help them advance their photography to the next level? There's one singular good piece of advice that I've been given. And this has really been from years of, of working on films and trying to put my work in front of different audiences, um, whether through speaking or you know in front of editors, is that um, you should never describe people what they can already see, right? And that 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 piece of wisdom really is so important. Like when you look at a photograph of that girl surfing, you don't need to know that it's evening time and she's surfing a wave and she's on a longboard. You don't care about that. All that stuff is irrelevant. Why? Because you can see it with your eyes. So what do you need to know? Well, you as the photographer, as the creative director, as the storyteller, what did you feel in that moment? What did that, what did that look like to you? What was the goal? 
you felt the water saturating your suit. You felt the wind, you know, you know, raise the hair on the back of your neck. Give me a sense of what it was like to be there. Give me the, the feeling, the emotion. And that's a real huge part of, I think, what makes an image successful, what makes something valuable and worth sharing is the fact that you have something worth saying about it. And, and I don't want to bum anybody out, but if you, if you take an experience like that and you're like, I got this great image, it's so awesome, it changed my life, I can't wait to share it, and you're, you're sitting there and you've got you know, Twitter fingers and you're all excited to post it online and you go to share it and all you say is, the mountains are calling and I must go. Um, I think that when you do that, you do yourself a huge disservice because that's not your quote. That's not what it felt like to you. You're just taking somebody else's words and you're kind of sharing that. So I would hope that you can extract, um, I guess, your concept of what it was that you felt there and write that out and figure out how to use your voice as well as your camera to really share an experience. Thank you for giving us this amazing inside look into your world of photography and creativity. And you and I will catch up again soon. So anytime. Thanks, amigo. Okay. Yeah, appreciate it. See you, buddy. Okay, take care. So you guys, we're kind of on a journey together. And I think this is a really important thing to take our time, put it into creativity. Use this time to to build our creativity, because that's actually going to strengthen each one of us and strengthen ourselves as a community. So will you guys invite your friends, subscribe, share this video, and remember to get out and capture your own images of life.